Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into the laboratory project for uh, parametric equations called running circles around circles. Now go over part six where we uh, graph uh, uh, epic cycloids or epicycloids. In my part five video, I did the derivation for the parametric parametric equations for it. Now to quickly recap on this laboratory project, uh, parts one to four, I went over the hypocycloid, which is a circle that's uh, rotating around a fixed outer circle, and it's rotating inside it, and then we just basically trace a point on the circle and see what kind of curves we get. So make sure to check out my earlier videos on that. And then in the last video, part five, yeah, part five, I went over the derivation for an epicycloid, and now we'll look at uh, part six. Uh, and uh, this is the solution here, I'll get to it in a bit. Basically, part six says, investigate the possible shapes for epi epic cycloids or epicycloids, and use methods similar to problems two to four. And now here, I've, I've uh, basically developed um, just a solution here, so qu uh, question six or Q6. Recall from part five the definition and uh, parametric equations for an epicycloid. So basically an epicycloid is uh, similar to the hypocycloid except now you rotate around the outside of the circle. So as you can see here, the point's being traced on this as it's rotating around and you get a shape that looks like that around this fixed uh, blue circle. And these were the parametric equations which I derived in my last video. So make sure to check those out. And yeah, now so what I've done is uh, basically looked at the f previous parts, Q uh, or parts 2 to parts 4, and then basically the same kind of methods but for graphing the uh, epicycloids as we did for the hypocycloids. So here's again, I put it, I made a, a Desmos uh, a calculator inside the Desmos website, which is again quite amazing. So here what I've done is uh, over here, so for this section, so from question 2, if we let B equals to 1, remember again, B is the outer radius, uh, or, or the radius of the um, smaller, not the smaller, or the outside circle. So this is the B, and then the inner radius is A. So that's the outer one, and this is the outer, uh, inner one. So in this case, we're just using a unit radius B equals to 1. And then from question 2, uh, we just let A be a positive integer, and then what we get is the following kind of curves. For A equals 1, we get a shape called a cardioid, and this is uh, basically when the radius A equals to B. So in other words, A equals 1 equals to B, and we get a shape that looks like this. And you can see from this calculator, here I have A equals to 1 and this, and I also set up. So again, like always, what I would do is uh, I would have the equation here in parametric form. There's the X and there's the Y coordinates of it. I can't use theta, so I use T, and I also copy that same thing here, but replace the T or theta with Z so that we can graph a single point and see how it goes. This is from uh, to negative 2 pi to pi, and you can speed it up like that, etc. And as you can see, this is the cardroid, and you can see how it moves around it. And now if we let b equals to 1 and then change a, so as you can see, a changes. We get shapes like this. We can slow this, do slow this down. So this one, there's about, uh, if there's a is 6, we get, well, these are 6 uh, clovers, or I mean 6-sided clovers like that or uh, six leafed clovers, etc. So as you can see, you can play around with this. Let's just go over here. If it's five, I'll just pause this. So as you can see, we have, this looks like a uh, five leaf clover or a flower or whatever this is. And there's also five cusps, one, two, three, four, five. And in fact, the radius of this, uh, these cups, uh, cusps are all at the five here. So when A equals to five, you have distance here is five. So what I've done, I copied and pasted there. So B equals to 1. A equals to 1, we have this card cardioid. That's uh, just a popular shape. And now if we get A is greater than 1, it's still an integer, we get a, we get a graph. We get a uh, A-leafed clover. It's a flower or whatever, or plant. With A cusps, so in this case A is 3, so we have 1, 2, 3, and there's these leaves right here, you could consider them as leaves. There's three of those that are A units from the origin. So here, this is three. So this radius here is three, which is A, which equals to A. And now here I have A equals to 10. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 leaves uh, of this uh, clover or whatever, and there's again, there's going to be 10 cusps, 
and a distance here, as you can see, this is, well, 10, and that equals to A. So that's a shape like that. And now from question three, uh, or part three, uh, what we did for the hypocycloid was we tried again B equals to one, just the unit radius. But instead we chose A equals N over D, which is a fraction with no common factor. Uh, for example, uh, two over, let's say, three. These can't divide easily, so this is the lowest uh, form. So uh, example like that, et, et cetera. So what I've done with that, and we get these following curves, and here's uh, updated the calculator, so if you click this one, you could see that I've done that, A equals to N over D, and this is cool, you could put, uh, this is A plus B in there, now I have A over, A equals to N over D right here, and you could change N and D here, and here what I've done now is if keeping N equals to one and changing D, we obtain a figure that does not increase in size and requires uh, the range right here, you know, the range, uh, this is going to be negative d pi, uh, where phi is between negative d pi and d, uh, positive d times pi, to be a closed curve traced exactly once. And this one is for d equals to 4, or we have a equals to 1 over 4. So for example, what I mean is if you go into, uh, here's this shape right here, so if we have this, whatever we change it here. So for initially, we have d equals to 2. This is a full curve. But then let's say we increase to 3. Now would we see it's not, uh, it's not fully closed right here. So then we would go put 3 right here. And as you see, it closes off uh, there once we add another 3. So now it's a full curve. If we go to 5, same exact thing. So as you see, it needs more uh, wider range of theta or t right here. So I just, I just can't use theta in this calculator, so I just use t. So then we have it like that. So what I've done here is I've uh, pasted uh, two of these uh, where a equals 1 over 4, or d is, is 4. So these are just fractions like that, and we have a shape that looks like that. And now when we increase it, the inner shape right here looks like a cardroid. It just gets smaller, but then the overall shape gets same size as more spirals. And this is where we have a equals 2, 1 over 7 or 0.1428, et cetera. Next, uh, we keep uh, D constant, and then, then if we vary N, we get shapes like this. So keeping D equals to five and varying N, we see that the size of the figure increases as N increases with an N-pointed star in the middle. Here is two. So here we have N equals to two, and we uh, fix this one so the overall A is equal to two over five, or 0.4. And then when we increase that here, we have uh, 2 points, 1, 2, and that's because n is 2. And then here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7 sides of a 7 sided star like that. And that's n is 7, or we have uh, a is equal to 7 over 5. And again, we need to make sure that it's the lowest common form so they can't divide it by each other. And I'll show you the graph in a bit. And also wanted to point out that the d equals to 5, it's still mandatory for this case as well. So if you change it, the loop's not going to be fully closed. So here if we make, uh, let's say what we had was, uh, yes, we chose at d equals to 5 there. So if we g d is 5 and we change this to, uh, let's say, 4. So let's make this step by 1, like that. Yeah, so 6. So if we have um, two right here, we have the two-sided. We get three, we get three, and then we have uh, four, we get like that. But then if we have five, that's a common factor, so then it just, just it gets bigger, but we have the cartroid again. Six, now we have six-sided, seven, et cetera, all the way to 10, then it goes back to two. So you can see a, a pattern like that. But in this case, we only were dealing with a uh, fraction that was just the lowest possible fraction that can't divide by each other. And now the next thing I've done is uh, if we make n equals to d plus 1, here's a calculator there, we obtain similar figures as above, but the size of the figure does not increase. So here, this one, if you have a n is equal to, as you can see, the size gets bigger and bigger, like that. And you can also play around with it. But here's the exact same, like, very similar stuff, but now if you make it like this, as in example, I think part 3 as well, from the hypocycloid, that's the kind of stuff I was doing. And then basically the si overall size gets about the same, it's about the same size, but then the inside shape here gets smaller, uh, or just actually it's the same shape, just more stars, 
more sided stars. And you can click here. I've made this one here, this calculator. And let's see here, I have n equals to d plus uh, 1, and we could change this. The size, as, you, as you can see, the size is the same. I believe it's the exact same. Let's see. Actually, yeah, it's roughly the same size. And as you can see, again, when you increase these, you're going to have to change this. This is d is 9, so we're probably going to have to do, see if we do 8, still probably not enough. So 9, like that, let's go with 8 here, so still not 9. I think, I think that was the same. Actually, yeah. So as you see, it needs to be nine. We have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine-sided star inside. And again, you need to change the range, and it's uh, it appears to be uh, nine or d times pi, and then on the other side, it's negative uh, nine pi. So that's how that looks like. This is for the case where d equals to six, n is seven, or we have a is equal to n over uh, d, or seven over six. And this one here. Uh, we have a equals 2, 4 over 3. So n is just one size bigger. And now from question 4, what we did was we made, we made a irrational, and then what we happens, we get washers that increase in size as a increases. So for here, what I've done is made b equals to, yeah, b is still equal to 1. I made a equals to e minus 2. That's going to be an irrational number that there's no patterns in the decimal places. We get a shape like that. And we could uh, play around with this. We can just go here, a equals 2, e minus 2. So we got a shape like this. And as you can see, because it's irrational, it never closes the form. So here what I've done, I've put 0 right here. And now if we go to, let's say, 400, we get a shape that looks like this. And my calculus book uses 446. We get it like this. And if we go, let's say, even further, put a 0, we get an, a, a full closed wash. Really. I'll just erase that. So as you can see, the more, the larger you increase, the more solid it becomes. And also what happens is the washers uh, increase in size as A increases. And again, based on whatever these are. If you go to infinity uh, if it, and it's irrational, then you're going to have it perfectly, like appears perfectly solid. So this is uh, 0.718. If we increase in size to, for example, here, square root 2, and this is 1.41. And as you can see, this is this does get a bit bigger here. So this is bigger size over here. Because I use the exact same uh, coordinates uh, system like that. So if we go here, and uh, I've done that for square root 2, you can just write square root, uh, and I'm this equals to square root 2. And you have to see a shape like that, etc. And then if you go to, this is, I had it at 200. But again, if you put it at 2,000, it's going to be a solid or more solid. It's going to go 20,000, just 10 times more calculations. You can see how slow it is. I think it's going to like blow up my... Yeah, there it is. And let's just erase this. I press delete. You can see how slow it is because there's a billion calculations. And then we have it over there. And again, if we increase the size of this, let's go with uh, 3. Yeah, so we just get even bigger. I think that's irrational. Yeah, so we have a shape like that. Let's see if it is actually irrational. Put a zero. Yeah, it, it, it is. It does appear to be irrational. Like that. So as you can see, yeah, it's pretty cool. It just gets bigger and bigger based on the size. It goes square two. It's small. So anyways, that's all for today. I just wanted to show a play around with this. And and yeah, overall, the, the shapes kind of look like the same as a hypocycloid, uh, but just a bit different. You could play around with it more so. Uh, and as you can see, you'll have shapes like this. It's pretty cool shapes. Uh, anyways, yeah, just uh, play around with it and see what you come up with. And again, use those Desmos calculators. Quite amazing. It's the best uh, calculator I've seen, especially with parametric equations. Anyways, it's all for you. If you learned and follow along, it's pretty cool stuff. Again, parametric equations are one of my favorite topics. It's what actually got me into mathematics. Just because some of the shapes are absolutely amazing where you could create crazy shapes with uh, like solid formulas. So instead of having to manually draw. Anyways, all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.